Good morning guys, I have been asked to do a video on how we connect a um, board to motors and drivers so I'm doing that. I built this table myself and this table, the reason I built it myself was it allows me to do two tools on one machine and as you can see I've got a plasma torch and as well as a spindle and then it's all made out of aluminium. It took me a little bit of time to put together, it runs on rack and pinion and what I'll do is I'll actually show you the machine running. In the background there you see I've actually got a Chinese laser cutter as well <coughs> which I didn't make, I purchased because it was just cheaper to actually buy the thing than it was to make the thing. So here is my machine running. Let me just make sure that I don't have it on jog mode and it's on continuous. Right, so there we go. We'll do some rapids. Okay, let me get all of this out of the way and then we can start. Okay guys, here we're back. I've just moved everything out of the way and I've done a little bit of a drawing. As you can see, I'm the artist. Um, <clears throat> and we stole this from my kid's bedroom and we stole one of his pens, which obviously doesn't work as well as I'd like. It doesn't matter. Let's talk about the things that we're going to be covering in this. We have a PC and this is sort of how it lays up and looks. This is very simplistic, but nevertheless, in actual fact, it is very simple to put this together. So we have a PC that connects to Bob, which is a breakout board. Here's our breakout board here. These are one of those cheap Chinese ones. Then from the Bob, we're going to connect it to a driver. This being a driver here. This is also the Chinese version, which I'll show you now. I have also a Gecko driver, which I currently you now use on my machine. Um, but it doesn't matter. This works just as good. Well, it works just as well in terms of getting it to work. Um, and then from there we have <coughs> what we will be using is obviously a power supply, which is one of these here. Um, I also don't use these anymore. I use a different version of power supply. The power supplies that I now use are very much um, old school. These are switched mode. I don't use that anymore because we don't have great power in South Africa where I live. So I use more traditional with big caps and, and just, as I'll show you now, more power supplies like this. I use a power supply like this. So in any case, so let's just carry on. And then <clears throat> from the power supply, we are going to finally have it all connected up to motors. Here's one motor here. Um, and obviously in the picture here, this is the bigger boy, bigger brother. <clears throat> um, I'll also just talk very quickly about one of these things that I have as well, which I um, got from the land uh, from the east, from China, and just give you a bit of a rundown and my thoughts on it. Um, so we'll do that. Right, so let's get started then. I'm going to move to the bob part and we're going to discuss a little bit of what's happening in the bob. So let me move this out the way here. So here it is here and maybe what I'll do is get a little bit of a zoom in there. Um, just so that we can... Right, there we have it. Alright, cool. So I hope you can see what's going on here. So let's just talk about the Bob. So the Bob stands for breakout board and that is obviously what comes in from the computer to this. And there's a couple of components. We have a parallel port over here, which is a parallel input for the Bob board. We have power that comes in over here and all these pins over here translate and relate to this parallel port. All these little caps and resistors and whatever they call them. I'm not, please forgive me if I use wrong names. It's just how I am. I'm a bit dyslexic doesn't matter, the stuff will still work. All of these things are what they call optically isolated, so they're isolated from one another and that you don't get damage if something goes wrong. Um, if you wire it up, you shouldn't get damage to these things uh, well, probably in any, in any case. Okay, so parallel port from the computer plugs into this here and the software then talks to this via the parallel port, the Macht software, whichever software you're going to use will talk to the board via the parallel port. And that's the crux of the whole matter. That allows us to do this as well as it gives us the, the, the pros of um, being able to set this up at home but also the weaknesses of the parallel port and, and you know it's got some limitations. Over here we put power and this is normally 5 volts <coughs> power depending what uh, machine um, or board you have it might vary you just need to obviously check that up on the, the paperwork that you have with it but generally it's 5 volts and if you look here um, I don't know if you'll see there but it says ground and plus 5 volts and that goes in there. 
That's obviously to power the board. Once that is powered, we then need this to talk to something. If I take a motor like this and show it to you there, there's not enough power in the 5 volts to drive one of these at all. It's just, it's not going to happen. So, what we actually use is, and I'm going to use this because it's just smaller for the picture. But what we use is we use what we call a driver. And what the driver does, it takes the signal from here, which goes into there. And then we have big power that goes in here, which is from 18 to 80 volts. And, and then all of a sudden we start having one of these come into the mix. I don't know if you can see that. Let me just check. Uh, not really, not very well. But we start having one of these come into the mix. And this is enough power to drive the motor by a long shot. So what we actually effectively doing is we're actually just helping the breakout board or the bob get a little bit more, well not a little bit, quite a lot more power to drive everything. So the bob uh, as, or the board, actually the breakout board as it stands has pins that are called P2, P3 and, it, and then it's obviously all the pins and it goes all the way up to pin, um, if I'm not mistaken, 17 over there. And they jump around a little bit. And what we generally do with these pins here is the two pins on all of these things for them to work, we have a thing called a step and a direction. And to explain a step and a direction is basically saying you are going to take, and we let's use the word forward and back, you are going to go forward five steps. If I tell that to a five year old, he'll know exactly what to do and he'll walk five steps forward. It's exactly the same principle as this. We use one of these to talk about this, the direction that we're going to be going in and the other pin to say how many of those we're going to be going in. And that's basically the simplest way to explain this. Right, so now that we've got that, we need these to connect to that. Now on this, it's got a thing called a direction and a step over there. And then obviously has a couple of other things. One is disabled, which I don't use. And then on this, it's got a thing called common, uh, which is on the, the, the step, oh, uh, not the step, on the gecko on the driver which is a stepper driver in needless to say so what we have here is we have power that goes into this which would be then one of these so we'll run power into this we'll plug our motor into phases a and b and i'll show you a cool little nifty trick i use on these motors to determine which is A and which is B, um, and how it works. And obviously A and B, there's a little diagram there which shows a coil, and effectively that's what the motor has. It just has two coils inside there. When you turn the motor, that's how the motor works. Then what we do is from here, we take other, any of these pins to one goes to step and one goes to direction. And you now need to configure that in Mach 3. Now that's a whole different discussion to have about how we do that. And if you guys want, just shout and I can go through that with you. This driver uses common, which is a ground to activate or to switch on to know that it's been connected. So when it gets the feed from the common to say it's at zero volt, it then switches on. Um, and it's common from the board by the way that I use. It's not common from the from this here. It's not the common from that. It's the common that goes into the five volts here from the board. So, and then next to it, it's got a thing called a resistor. Now this is probably the most important Bit about all of this. The resistor is used to determine the kind of amperage that this driver can put out to a motor. Now this motor, the one of the bigger motors I've got, <coughs> which is 3.5 amps, and then the little motor I've got is obviously, it's smaller but it's a 3 amp motor. Now you'd look at the size of the motors and go like, wow, how can one be 3 amps and one be 3.5? Well, it doesn't really matter that. Let me zoom out a little bit here so we can sort of maybe get a bit more in the picture here of what's going on. And just rotate that round a little bit <coughs> so we can get a view of what I'm doing here. Um, so the amperage of the motor has got nothing to do with how the motor looks. It's got to do with how the windings are inside the motor. So whether they've used lots of windings or little windings, it will absolutely determine how, how many amps each one of these motors draws. So I'm di di diverse, di digressing a little bit. Don't look at a motor and, and, have an, and assume what the amperage of it's going to be. You need to actually know what it is and you need to get that info. Right, so very quickly on the motors, the important bit is to do the amperage. So this here says at 36k, it will give me 3 amps. So I would put a 36k amp resistor on this for 3 amps on this motor. Because it's a 3.5, I always believe more power is better. We go for 65k resistor, which will give me 4 amps, which will drive this motor quite well, and then the motor won't overheat. So we ask the question, if I run 7 amps into these motors, 
as you can see the motors are actually probably going to get very very well they will get very very hot and can damage the motors which is what we want to do we don't want to overdrive the motors we want to drive the motors within their tolerance and spec cool let me show you a nifty trick about which goes into a and which goes into b <coughs> now i've got four leads here and if I take these four leads and I take a color, let's say black, and I start turning this, nothing's touching, it actually turns relatively easily. If I take this and I connect it to one of the wires, one of the winding wires like this here, and I turn it, it's turning exactly the same. It's not difficult to turn. If I take it and I turn it to another wire like this, and I turn it, it's still turning just as freely and easily. If I take it now, so we now know that red and blue definitely are not working uh, with this black wire. If I take it and put it onto the green wire, all of a sudden I can feel it notch and goes click, 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 click. It's now got a resistance on it. So now I know that this is one of the A or B and it doesn't matter. You can put it on A or put it on B because in the software you can program it and you can change whether it's in reverse or forward. So it doesn't actually matter. What I would suggest, however, is if you're running motors like and you got six or four well, most uh, machines will have uh, four or three motors i would well maybe four i use always four so i would try and do my coloring the same so it all goes in the same it's easier to program it's less difficult it's, it's less likely that you're going to be programming the things incorrectly so if i take for example the red and the blue like this and i hold it together and then i turn it it's back to being notchy again so now i know which are a and b it doesn't matter but i know which are these pairings are working i know that you get obviously six wire and eight wire i haven't used those i used the four wire and at some point maybe i'll do it and look at that and give you some feedback but that's a quick little cheap handy trick to find out without you having to have a manual for a motor if you get given a motor right <clears throat> let's go and talk about this little bugger over here this is the chinese version which i think most people would have let's talk about how we okay we're back and talking about this Chinese driver <coughs> and how we set it up. So I've zoomed in, I hope you can see the letters and the writing. So we have an AB here and we have an A that obviously is the windings for the motors as I showed you earlier and then we have ground and VDC and that is obviously the power supply that connects to drive the actual motor which we discussed earlier as well. On this side here is where it's slightly different to the the gecko driver which has the common we don't use the common on this one we actually use the positive five volts so what we have over here is we have pulse which is a positive five and we have direct which is a positive five and then we have pulse which is a negative <coughs> and a direct which is negative what we do here is i've got it connected so you can sort of not connect it but i've got it that you can sort of look at the board so we have pulse positive and direct positive which you would take the five volts from this board and just tear it off and run it into the pulse positive five and take a little loop and put it into the pulse direct and that will enable the the driver then on the pins and direction we'll take a pin in the direction and the pin goes obviously into the pulse <coughs> and the direct goes into the the negative direction so it's the negative pulse it's the step uh, i've been referring to step and then obviously the direction is the, the, the direction. So if you just keep that in mind, you'll be good to go. If you get that wrong, it's not the end of the world. You, you, you will see that things won't run properly. You can always just ch change it around, but just try and pay attention to that. So the direct is always the direct. And then over here, what, what there's a whole lot of, obviously there's a bit of information here. It's got to do with the settings and the switches and I'll just try and turn it like that. These are the switches that are the same as the Gecko driver's resistor that talks about how many amps you'll be putting into the motor and then the other thing is it actually talks about the pulses that you're going to get off the motor and depending what type of motor you have and how many um, degrees that it turns it will talk about the pulses you should also get this from the the person that um, submitted or that you bought the the actual motor from it they should be able to tell you that if not um, Again, you can just send um, some info to me and I can maybe just help you guys. Just to talk about the cables and the thickness of the cables here. So we have obviously different cables and as you can see on the different cables they have different thicknesses. I'm of the belief that you can never have too much power, which means that for me the thickness of the cables are the things that, that are important. So run the cables the same thickness as they come out the motor if you can. Um, there are limitations to how thick a cable you can run because of obviously the boards as well. They can only take in a certain thickness of cable in the first place. So depending on how big your board is will determine how thick the cable is you can run. 
what I, f what I did is I ran the thickest cable I could in actual fact I ran 2.5 millimeter cable which is a little bit on the hefty side and, and I really struggled to get it in and, and connect it up but needless to say I eventually got it done and I would rather have thicker cables than not so that the motors have all the power that they need and it's not a cable problem. There are such things for example as cables that you get EFI so you might get some interference on the cables especially if they're bare, mine are bare. I don't have a problem with that yet um, and I'll deal with that when I have a problem. I do run a thing called a smooth stepper, Ethernet smooth stepper and that does help because parallel ports are also known to get interference as well. So there are a couple of things that I've done to help alleviate that. Earthing obviously is quite important as well but we can discuss this in another another segment. I think just as a, as a bit let's talk about we, as we've done let's just discuss the motors and that and then the final thing I wanted to just go through is I've got one of these um, <coughs> Chinese things which if I move it will actually move my machine. Out. So let me just get some of this crap out of the way. Let me just and as we wind it, it sort of moves the machine and we'll eventually get the machine into view at some point. Oh, there we go. Right, so this moves the machine. It's all great and well for doing some testing on the movements of the machine and that. Uh, just, I wouldn't use this in a production environment at all. Um, I just don't like wireless. I think it's a bad idea. Um, it's great to be able to stand and look at your machine and say, okay, look, that, that switch is working, that switch isn't working, but I wouldn't use this in a production environment. Um, I think you can get interference with it um, and I will be disconnecting it and using my keyboard when I'm actually cutting and doing jobs. All right, and I think that's about it, guys. If there's anything else, well, let me not say guys, because maybe that's been horrible. Maybe someone else is watching, who knows? Um, if there's anything else you'd like me to cover, please let me know. I know that I haven't gone and showed you, I haven't connected the wires, but I hope that's enough to give you an idea of how to wire this thing. If you have a wiring of something and you want to send it to me, please take a photo of it and send it through and I can tell you whether or not that looks good or not. Um, I haven't left my email address there, but please just inbox me or ping me and I'm happy to send that through to you. So thanks very much for the time and, and watching. Chat to you guys soon. Ciao.